Okay, so yeah, let me start. Um, um, thank you very much for the introduction and uh, thank you for inviting me. I'm very excited to be here to share our work on implicit neural representations for novel view appearance, content, and semantic synthesis. So why are these tasks interesting for autonomous driving? Here I show a screenshot of Waymore. Uh, they are testing their autonomous driving cars in the real world. As we can see that um, of, uh, usually for these autonomous driving cars, we need safety drivers sitting in the car to avoid accidents. And furthermore, in this case, the world that we are driving in, we cannot manipulate them. For example, we cannot um, decide which kind of building we want to have on the site. We can just, we only need to like really test a lot of cities and um, to test the autonomous driving vehicles. In contrast, this can be um, elevated if we have a simulator. Here is a screenshot of Waymo, uh, of Carla, sorry. And uh, in Carla, we can act, can manipulate all the objects we want to have in the scene. And of course, we don't need a safety driver in Carla. But of course, as we can see that in Carla, there's still a domain gap to the real world. So for testing, uh, autonomous driving cars in the real world. As we said, there is no domain gap and we don't need to have an, spend any design effort. However, this is highly risky and the thing is uncontrollable. In contrast, if we have a simulator, there is no risk and it's fully controllable. However, there is domain gap and it's also expensive to create these contents. So the key question we want to ask in this talk is can we build a simulator from real world images that has no domain gap to the real world and has full controllability? Recently, the advances of NERF has uh, achieved super uh, impressive performance on the world synthesis. I'm sure that many of you are familiar with NERF. Just as a short recap, uh, NERF represents the scene use a single MLP denoted as F theta here. It takes as input a 3D location in the world, as well as the viewing direction of the camera, and outputs uh, RGB and the density. As NERF infers in the 3D space to obtain a color of the image, for each pixel, we query a set of points along the ray and accumulate to obtain the, uh, to obtain the RGB while volume rendering. And NERF is trained over, uh, by, supervised by this image reconstruction loss defined on a set of training images. Once this model is trained, it can render a single scene at novel arbitrary viewpoints. Here is uh, some results of NERF. As you can see that uh, NERF can achieve quite uh, impressive performance on novel view synthesis. And in this talk, we want to ask, is NERF already sufficient for building such a simulator? And my answer to this would be no. And in this talk, we uh, introduce some of our works built on NERF to bring one step further to have the ideal simulator we would like to have. And the first work I'll talk about is Kina NERF for speeding up neural radiance fields. So towards building a simulator, we, for, we want to ask, is NERF sufficient as a simulator? There is one clear limitation of NERF being used as a simulator is that it's quite slow during rendering, which means uh, we don't want to have our autonomous vehicle sitting uh, in the simulator and wait for one minute to have a single image generated. So that's not really applicable. NERF is slow because it needs million squares of a deep MLP to render a single image. So this can take almost 56 seconds on a single GPU to generate a single image. And to speed up the rendering of NERF, we propose KiloNERF. The key idea is to replace the large MLP using a single shallow MLP. But of course, 
um, if we just replace the deep MLP with the shallow MLP, the image fidelity will not be kept. So we decompose the thing into thousands of, of this uh, voxels and use independent small MLPs to represent them. When combined with empty space keeping and early rate termination, we achieve real-time rendering and maintain the same image quality compared to NERF. Here we show a demo of Killer Nerf where the user can manipulate the rendering uh, in real time on a affordable consumer GPU, NVIDIA 1080. And we can also see that uh, it maintains the same image quality compared to NERF. Okay, so some more details about Killer Nerf. Here we show a comparison of the network uh, structure of uh, NERF and Kilo NERF. We can see that by using a shallow network, Kilo NERF reduced the number of flops to um, quite a lot from 1,000 to uh, 12K flops. The naive training of Kilo NERF uh, leads to artifacts in the empty space. So we propose a two-stage training strategy for Kilo NERF. Firstly, we supervise NERF by a trained NERF model. Uh, we supervise Kilo NERF by a trained uh, NERF model, where we want to map Kilo NERF's output to NERF's output. And in the second stage, we fine tune all tiny MLPs to minimize the re image reconstruction loss. Here we show some quantitative comparison to the baselines. We show that Kilo NERF is significantly faster than another baseline in SVF which also uses early rate termination and empty space keeping because of the tiny MLPs that we use. Compared to NERF, the visual fidelity is preserved and sometimes even improved. Moreover, there are also some concurrent works to kill a NERF that try to speed up NERF by tabulation, which means uh, by saving everything, uh, the output of the networks to enable real-time rendering. Compared to those tabulation-based methods that require two to eight gigabytes memory, Killer Nerf is more GPU memory uh, efficient, which requires only 100 megabytes. Here we show some image comparisons to Killer Nerf um, uh, of, of Nerf and Killer Nerf as well as NSVF. We can see that for this Lego thing, uh, it even achieves better image fidelity compared to Nerf. In our ablation study, we also show that reducing the grid resolution or the network size leads to worse performance. And fine tuning is necessary for achieving high visual quality. As we can see in this image, without fine tuning, we can see the border of the voxels. Um, and with, with the fine tuning, then these artifacts can be removed. Okay, so now let's uh, dive into the second part and begin with um, the question again, is Kilo Nerf sufficient as a simulator? As we have shown that all, uh, both Nerf and Kilo Nerf, they are only able to represent a single thing, which means they are not able to generate novel things or objects. Imagine having uh, such a simulation uh, simulator on the right, um, we, not, we want probably not only a novel view image um, at an, an, an image at a novel viewpoint, but we also want to create some novel objects. For example, for this car, can we replace it with a red car or a car that we have never seen? This will enable testing autonomous driving uh, algorithms on unseen environments. This leads to the question: Can we learn to generate three D contents from two D images? And this is the goal we want to achieve in Graph. So Graph is built on generative adversary networks. Existing 2D GANs are able to generate high fidelity and lower contents. For example, here we show example uh, generative images of Style Nerf 2, uh, Style GAN 2, sorry. And we can see that they can generate super high fidelity face images. However, for these 2D GANs, there is no 3D controllability. And in the simulator that we want to build, 
we want to have 3D controllability, for example, controllability over the camera poses. So how do we achieve this? And uh, yeah, the idea is also straightforward. We simply build a generator based on radiance fields by lifting the conventional 2D generator to the 3D we model the image formation process in 3D. And this enables uh, at inference time, we, then, we can then control the camera pose of the generated objects. Here we illustrate our generator. So we draw a random uh, noise from a Gaussian distribution. This is the Z and we concatenate this Z together with the location X and camera view D this then generates a color and a density in the world. And this enables rendering of uh, novel objects as, at novel viewpoints. So we learn this from unstruct uh, and unpost to the image collections as it's quite hard to obtain 3D supervisions for neural radiance fields. Here is a closer look at graph. There are two key differences compared to NERV. Firstly, we use a conditional neural radiance field. So this conditional neural radiance field take as input the 3D location, the camera viewing direction, as well as two random noise, uh, two random vectors to model the shape and appearance of an object. The second major difference to NERV is that we don't have the per pixel supervision. Instead, we have only supervision from the discriminator to tell whether the image is real or fake. So this is much a much more challenging task compared to NERV. In this case, when we train the model, we sample camera poses from a giving distribution, as well as image patches of size 32 by 32. This means we always, uh, during training, we always generate only a single patch and fit this patch into the discriminator. The discriminator also sample a real patch, uh, a real patch from the real world images to tell whether this patch is real or fake. So this patch based discriminator allows us to maintain the GPU memory co consumption during training, no matter which resolution we train on. And during inference, the generator can then generate the full image. Here we show some results of graph. As we can see that now we can generate objects uh, with 3D controllability over the camera poses. We can also control the shape and appearance of the object. And our method also allows to be applied on face. And of course, this uh, is one of the first works on this um, nerve-based GANs, and the image fidelity is not great here. And actually, it's quite uh, this field is developing very fast. And recently, there are also some quite uh, impressive results on this, like EG3D or style nerve. So another question that we ask um, when we have graph is that what more can we do beyond think of this? This is actually not super relevant to the goal of building a simulator, but uh, is re relevant for how can we understand the thing better if we are able to synthesize the thing. So the task here is uh, analysis by synthesis. The goal is to fix the parameters of the graph and then giving arbitrary target image, we can use GAN inversion to retrieve the camera pose as well as the latent code. So in the first row, we show the initialized image. And in the last row, we show the target. And uh, we can see that giving like very diverse camera poses or the object poses, it can still recover the car and the latent code. So in this work, uh, we investigated how can this be done? Um, so we found that if we use naive gradient descent to recover the camera pose and the latent code, then the method can easily get stuck in local minimum due to the non convexity of the loss landscape as we illustrate here. And in this work, we propose to, visualize, uh, to 
uh, think about this analysis by this task from the perspective of vision navigation, where we want to reach a target image, taking a step of actions, and we explore uh, classical uh, strategies in vision navigation, including imitation learning and reinforcement learning. And we show that by using this learnable navigation strategies, we are able to reach the target and is less prone to local minima. Okay, so the last part in my talk, I will talk about the panoptic nerve for 3D to 2D label transfer. Now let's go back again to the key question. So is graph or killer nerve efficient uh, for sufficient for building the simulator? What is still missing, we think, is the semantic information. So uh, existing simulators like Kala, they should provide full semantic information, which enables training autonomous vehicles in the simulator. And this is currently missing. This would require rendering of semantic labels at lower viewpoints. And as semantic labels are human defined concepts, we also need annotated data to achieve this goal. So in this talk, I will also mention our effort in both the algorithm and uh, data collection. In terms of algorithm, we propose panoptic nerve for 3D to 2D label transfer. So here the task is that we want to transfer 3D course annotations to 2D panoptic labels for efficient labeling. As annotating the thing in with the 3D bounding boxes is much more efficient comparing to annotate them in the 2D image space. And uh, the key idea is to infer panoptic labels in the 3D space and render per pixel panoptic labels while volume rendering as well. And there are two key challenges in this task. Firstly, we observe that in this uh, urban scene that we considered, we have the views are quite sparse compared to the original of setting, which means it's harder to recover an accurate geometry. And with inaccurate geometry, directly render with the inaccurate geometry leads to inaccurate semantic maps. Furthermore, the bounding primitives sometimes have overlaps and ambiguous labels at overlapping region is also problematic to obtain 2D uh, labels. So in this work, we aim to tackle both challenges. And inspired by previous works, we also leverage noisy 2D predictions transferred from other data sets. And we leverage panoptic nerve to fuse semantic information in the 3D space to be able to render multi-view consistent semantic and panoptic segmentations. Here is the key uh, main pipeline of panoptic nerve. The key to your method is the leverage of a dual semantic, uh, dual semantic fields. So why do we want to have these dual semantic fields? Firstly, we have a fixed semantic field determined by the bounding primitives. And we render a semantic map based on this fixed semantic field. And then we guide, uh, we, minimize, uh, uh, recall, we minimize the cross entropy loss compared to the noisy 2D ground truth. We demonstrate that the noisy 2D predictions are able to improve the underlying geometry when applied to the fixed semantic field, which we call semantically guided geometry optimization. And uh, note that if we directly apply this to the learned semantic field that we ha also have, then the network can simply cheat by adjusting the semantic prediction and not correcting for the geometry. And then we further have this learned semantic field to resolve the label ambiguity between the overlapping region of the 3D bounding primitives, which is supervised by the 3D bounding primitives as well as the noisy 2D predictions. Finally, we also have this instant field uh, that is determined by the 3D bounding primitives. We show that panoptic nerve is able to achieve better performance compared to existing 3D to 2D label transfer methods. For example, the CRF-based method has some problem 
at the overexposure regions because it's inference in it infer in the 2D image space. And in contrast, in our method, we don't have a such problem because we infer in the 3D space. And the same for the panoptic label transfer. And what's uh, more importantly is that panoptic NOV also enables novel view semantic synthesis that we show in this demo. So here we first show comparisons to the baselines uh, for semantic and panoptic label transfer. We also demonstrate that compared to the original nerve, our semantically guided that geometry optimization leads to better geometric reconstruction. So this is the, and here the last uh, result I show is the novel view synthesis result. The experiments we did uh, with panoptic nerve uh, it uses, is applied on Kitty 360. This is a data set we recently introduced uh, with the hope to fully uh, to push uh, it uh, to, to enable reach um, uh, to have a comprehensive annotations to further push forward uh, the to further push the community forward. So. More uh, specifically, we have um, bonding boxes annotated covering the full thing, and we also want to transfer these bonding boxes to the image space to have dense annotations in both 2D and 3D space. Here, I also want to make a little advertisement about our benchmarks that we have. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, uh, so for the benchmarks, uh, we believe that for autonomous driving, it requires a concerted effort across different fields, including computer vision, graphics, and robotics. That's why with, uh, with KD360, we really want to make a set of benchmarks at a, in the section of these fields to unify uh, the effort from different fields towards building the full autonomy system. And we have tasks including semantic sync, uh, second, uh, semantic scene understanding, novel, and novel view synthesis, where we also evaluated uh, state of the art methods like NERF, MIP NERF, and uh, PBNR for uh, to bootstrap the leaderboard. And finally, we also have a semantic stem that we want not only evaluate the localization, but also the reconstruction. Okay, so as a summary, I've in, I introduced three methods, killer nerve for accelerating nova view appearance synthesis graph for nova view content synthesis and panoptic nerve for nova view semantic synthesis. I also introduced our data set, uh, KD360 and nova benchmarks. For future works, I believe there's still a lot to be done to really make an ideal simulator for autonomous driving. For example, we also, we want to simulate, uh, we also want to build a 3D aware generation model of large scale things instead of only being applicable to single objects. Furthermore, it will also be interesting to investigate the generating model of motion trajectory. And lastly, I would like to thank all my collaborators for these words. Okay, thank you. That's all for my talk. Thanks, Yi. Uh, let's applaud the speaker. I'm not sure if you can hear us. <laughs> okay, now we have um, time for some questions. Any from the audience present here? Um, online participants can um, write them on the chat and uh, we can read them out. The speaker. Maybe I can start. I was wondering um, how much the instance feel that you mentioned in panoptic nerve uh, influences the performance. Mm, actually, the instance field we have in panoptic nerve uh, does not in fact affect the performance at all. Uh, so actually, this is one thing we think it can be improved because we 
have only semantic losses defined, and we also only optimize for the semantic. For instance, field is simply determined by the uh, bounding primitives. That's why there is currently no influence. And what we observe uh, is that actually the for, for all the classes that have instance labels, for example, like buildings and cars, they rarely intersect with each other. That's why uh, currently it still gives like plausible uh, performance for this panoptic label transfer. But if indeed like two instances they overlap with each other, then the method fails. So yeah, there's still some work to be done here, there. Thank you. Thanks. Any more questions from the audience? Check the chat a second, don't have anything. Maybe I can still ask another question. Um, I was wondering about the scalability to um, really large um, city scale rendering. So I see generally all of the subsequent NERF work that one of the biggest challenges is scaling it up. What are your thoughts on um, this direction? Um, yeah, uh, for scaling up further, like I, I think uh, the maybe the closest work would be block NERF uh, that they decompose the thing into like uh, different blocks right I, I also agree with that like i think decomposition is a key towards scaling it up like for example also in killer nerf we also decompose the thing but just into small voxels and then they decompose this into blocks and i think what could also be interesting for example to is to the semantic information for the decomposition. For example, here actually in panoptic nerve, we also have are able to decompose the thing based on the bounding primitives. So I think that's like also interesting uh, direction to go. Like to I, I think it really just depends on how you decompose the thing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, Thanks. We have a question on the chat actually too. Have you ever tried to extract a 3D mesh from nerf like works on some kitty scenes? What are the performances? Mm, we tried actually for panoptic nerf, and uh, the mesh does not look um, that great, I would have to say. Mm, I think, um, yeah. So I, I think that's also like a very interesting direction to investigate. Uh, I, I actually, I was also quite surprised because I thought like with the improved geometry we would have, because with the depth map, it actually looks good. But when we visualize the mesh, that doesn't look as good as we expected, uh, we would like to have. And uh, may, yeah, I, I think maybe there is still some work to be done, for example, to be combined with uh, this SDF or surface-based rendering, right? Like for SDF or, um, yeah, I think because in NERF, the surface is really ambiguous and you can only select this threshold to determine the surface. That's why we really want to have uh, the surface defined during volume rendering or during surface rendering to really have a good surface. Thank you. Um, another question online. Is it possible to expand this approach for data collected through active sensing, such as radar under different resolution? Mm. Through active sensing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not quite sure if I get uh, what would be the difference for um, like data collected through radar. So for example, in uh, panoptic nerve, what we take as input is uh, annotated bounding boxes uh, and RGB images. We don't actually assume that we have a super good geometry like collected from LIDAR. So actually we, despite that the fact that the 3D bounding boxes are annotated on the LIDAR points, actually they are not uh, necessary. So I would say like if we have uh, data collected from radar, uh, as long as we can get like good um, 
founding primitives, then I think that's also applicable. Um, yeah, but I'm not sure. Thanks. Okay. Um, any last chance for questions for our in presence participants? If not, um, let's thank the speaker again. Thanks, Lily, for the great talk. Thank you.